Greetings, mortals. I am Natus, one of the rulers of hell. And today we'll be reacting to the newest chapter of My Academia, chapter 324, A Young Woman's Decla Declaration. Ooh. By the title of it and the other next chapter, I feel like this is gonna be focusing on Momo. Yeah, I get that feeling, like, the last chapter really ended up with a strong Momo flashback chapter, if you know what I mean. <laughs> no, of course not, it's obviously gonna not be Ochako, in fact, just the first page of this chapter already reveals, yeah, we're gonna be focusing on Ochako, as well as getting a little, either a reminder, or a little bit of a flash, or a more of an exploration to a flashback that we already got with Ochako. Or is the anime? My manga anime memories sometimes clash with one another, so yeah. Alright, so let's get into this chapter. The so, the first words we get when we see a panel of cute uh, baby or Ochako with her parents is, I've always loved seeing people happy. And she's staring at uh, Naga who's extremely happy. And now we have even more of uh, her mindsets while we while we have the other people overlooking. Some staring at her, some staring at Izuko. It's 50-50, honestly. My parents always looked so exhausted, which was painful to see. And when I saw heroes in action for the first time, my gaze went straight to the faces in the crowd. I get, again, she, she's happy about seeing anyone, so it makes sense. As we see, like, some, I guess, looking and realizing. Some even look like, oh, this kid went through a lot. Like, this kid doesn't look good. Like, these people, I think what the idea is here is, like, these people have enough common sense to tell, all right, the kid is clearly not in a good state. It's just that their own selfish protection is what overlaps them. So, yeah, we see a so we see a wide panel of seeing how much how everyone is there and everything. As well as we see Zuko just staring in, in the rain. And see some people's thoughts and saying it aloud. He's looking rough, huh? Kind of weak and worn out. So they're even so they are aware of how he looks like. And Zuko is still staring at in the gaze, and we see that woman that Zuko saved uh, when this thing kind of started. He'll be like, "Yes, he's been fighting. He saved me out there, and he's been fighting this whole time." So I guess she felt like he was like right. I guess. It's not really went into detail, maybe it's gonna get into the next chapter, but I feel like this woman thought that he was like a passing by, like he rested and then go back, rested and then go back, but no, she's realizing, wait, he didn't rest a single day since the f since that day, he didn't rest a single? So that's like really big shocker. And we see even more people like staring and be like, uh, and then we see one guy, about over 17 or something, looking at her and back and he's like you want us to look at him so what don't tell me me that that we should be covered in filth too in all honesty this is like a really stupid argument to make but i guess it's supposed to be you yeah, not understanding what she asks them to and she's i guess she heard him somehow maybe she's like just gassed it Although, judging by the dialogue, it seems like she actually hurt him. Maybe there's like an extra better communication or something better hearing that device that she has because they actually do cover her ears as well. And she's like, no, heroes are the only ones caught in that filth. And he's like shocked because I guess he wasn't expecting her to respond with something like that. But she continues, so give him a moment's rest to wash away the grime. And we see them staring off, and he's like, set, probably figure out, no, Chris should probably figure out now how mad they everyone's house is in awe. And so Choco be like, wow, Choco. I guess that is very, like, emotional scene. Like, very, you have to have a lot of guts. Like, well, some people are asking in crowds in themselves, and it's like a lot of odd more than just a crowd. And they have either be like, Midoya, right now, Uraka is fighting. For you, of course, but for everyone else, too. So I guess she like wants to like remind people, all right, we can't do miracles. We need time to rest and all that. 
So we have uh, back to Chaco's mind. Uh, she's like, I always love seeing happy people fighting for our right to smile again. So she again explains a little more about how she views us on this stuff. Of Ezuko uh, being covered, his eyes become very teary eye, which is very not much a bad thing. Indeed, a very terrible thing. Don't cry in this moment, Izuku, even though you're completely broken mentally, physically, and, pro and probably need uh, more than a few days of sleep, but don't cry. Because it's because you're crying, baby. Obviously. So we have Uraka, and then we have her. She'll be like, if you want me to stand up here and reassure you, I'm sorry, I can't do that right now. As we see cut to the... To the best genius anyone. That's because we are all gripped by that same fear and unease. Seeing him in action, always desperate to save people, has given me so much thing to think about. Which uh what she is actually thinking right now, and the her next statement to people is like, we are all neighbors here, including him. When I hit back to her father, and she's like, when our hero is hurting. As we see the panel of Izuku, Bakugo, Ida, as well as Pazatma and Best Genius, we're also looking at R. As well as uh, Eretia, who's in the hospital, and Hawk, Shoto, and Endeavor in outside, I guess, waiting for it. And I was like, when heroes are hurting, not, well, that's not what he says, that's, that's the panel that's next to his face. And then we see um, back to that flashback, and she's like, when, where are you prepared? People are pointing out charcoal, the hills are that way. And then we see another one, yo, El, yo, eel boy. I guess that's the hero that she was looking at. And as we see, um, eel boy being like, um, like hearing it. And we see the girl looking at the eel boy. And he's like, they have this like derpy kind of, yeah, I win. Like this, he's also like with a standard hero, like maybe someone know, but not many. But he's like very beaten, and then we see uh, back like this over the top happy expression by Chaco being like, the ones to protect them have to be. And Chaco back, please lend him, him your strength so we have a shot at smiling together into the future. As she remembers Toga as she's starting to cry with her shock expression, and so Chaco be like, What he needs is your help, please. Fire in your hearts to let him rest and recover together with us. So again, I think I think this is actually what she always said in the last chapter. I mean to go ch back to chat, but I'm pretty sure she always asked them, them just let him recover. Let him stay here for a couple of days so that he'll be fine and then he'll go back. Like you can clearly tell that he's beaten. And having him run around until he can Hopefully find the anime and hopefully be that is not going to help anyone. Not you, not us, no one. And we see a bunch of people still staring and we see Inka also crying next to Bako's mom and back to Oraka's speech. Izuku Minoria is, is trying to take on all the responsibility that comes with his power, but he's still got plenty to learn himself. He's just a regular high school school kid. Which is, in their world, true. Like, hero schools are a thing that have been around for some time. Like, to them, he is no different. Should be, like, nothing different to us high schooler. It'd be kind of like expecting a military kid who to, like, do some amazing military general stuff. Even though, again, he's literally just a prodigy in a military school. That's it. And then we see that kid from before be like, yeah, but... Alright, it looks like this guy can actually win on All My Shirt, which is a bit ironic. As we try again screaming back at them, this place, and which Chaka, I guess, trying to recover from breathing, as we see a flashback, which I think we might have already seen, honestly, of Chaka and her mother. This will be a... As Chaka is again crying and falling on the ground, is his, this, is, as he falls on the ground sobbing, and we also have the flashback when Ochako and Izuku first met, it's a, and she will be like, it's a bad omen to trip and fall. As we see this, oh, it's a pretty beautiful panel, and 
not gonna say because of the moment and it's not even over the top, it's just a very beautiful panel drawn with Ochaka, I guess, getting to for another scream. The story of how I became the greatest hero. Which I guess is supposed to be Izuko's covering or something. It's hard to tell because of the you know narrations and about the specific name. He hero Academia, let him stay here. So he's basically saying that he, basically he's just saying like he also wants to be here starting and learning, but he cannot because of the fighting. As we see a bunch of people staring at and they are very very guilty, they're like, oh this kid is clear, like very able to stand as we see Izuku completing on his ground like and crying. I'm guessing he's also screaming in pain. And we see the woman rushing through and also everyone and Zuku, Nezu is staring at and he sees like everyone like kinda of starting to feel sorry. As we see the guy who's also in the first chapter, who like said, Oh, you can be a hero, also staying on. He has like one of the more blank expressions, and then like kinda of starting to feel sorry. As he's like staring in, into it, as he's starting to a bit can kind of like a theory eye over that scarred eye. One step away, try as it might, humanity struggles to make true pro progress. Which is true. Which I guess now we're going to Nazar's dialogue. And we see a ragdoll be like, ah, wait. Escort also runs through everyone. And now we have a Mendeley coming back, uh, asking about the shoes, like, which was mentioned in the uh, volume, I believe, 21, I believe. Or was it volume 20? It was in one of those two. Which, Mendeley be like, which shoes do you want? And it goes like, those gotta be those. As he's referencing the one... The red ones, which is supposed, which are the same ones that Izuku has when it comes to like the train camp and all that. And Sikoro rushing through it, and we see Koda and that woman coming to Izuku because, you know, they're, those two are probably like the most affected by him, probably in like the two who helped him the first. The story of how we all became the greatest heroes. Oh, so that's the lead up. So I guess now the. This is, I'm guessing, the future Izuku saying, no, I wasn't the only one who became the greatest hero. This is how all my entire class became the greatest heroes. I'm also assuming it probably be their generation, but, you know, I'm guessing it's more supposed to be like the entire class as the great feat of what Uchako did in this scene. Kind of surprising that Aoyama and Toru didn't dare to do much. I don't actually imagine it being referenced in a volume cover when this is, it's an a volume release, but still. So yeah, this is it for the chapter, basically. What could happen in the next chapter? Well, I feel like, again, I'm not writing off the possibility of uh, attack by the villains. Like, I can totally see the remaining assassins all striking, or us at least, like, getting a end of chapter, like, saying something like one of them looking at through binoculars and being like, huh, it seems like they're going in. So I to see they actually accepted that kid back because they don't know how broken he is. Which honestly, even I feel, I'm starting to feel a bit sorry. No, no, I'm not sure what kind of assassin they are going to be in, but I would imagine one that making like a joke coming like that. And they're like, what should we do now that he's in? And I could see them like, either they don't really know the mission, either going back to Tomura, Either attack or one that. I could also see it being like a bit of a time skip. Skip where we have him waking up or people like talking about what afterwards and about the, everyone's reaction to it. Or we could also just call it the, the manifestus world. But I'm not exactly sure. But we could also just continue at progressive with no interruption or breaking in between with let's say Koda, uh, Izuku realizing Do Koda and that woman are there. We also, I think, we find out this woman's name because I don't think she actually had a confirmed name. And they're like helping him get back inside or something. And probably thanking him for everything again. So, because I don't, I don't, did they actually get a chance to probably thank him? Because Izuku, I know the woman couldn't because he just ran off. I mean, maybe she like did, but he couldn't hear it because he was only far away. But yeah, that's about it for my thoughts on this chapter. So anyways, like always, tell me in the comments below what do you think about this chapter, what to have next, did you like this chapter, and with that said, I cannot wait to see all of you people next time. Goodbye.